Welcome back. My name is Ben, your host. It's been a while, but I have a good reason. I was busy doing this. I am officially a dad. I feel tired from all the sleepless nights and the activities that, you know, transpired the last couple of months. But at the same time, I feel so happy and blessed that you know, I always look forward to coming home and carrying the little one. The reason why I'm recording this video, the purpose of it is that we have a new software update available. So going into the settings and uh, general and software update, you can see, you know, I'm actually on Mac OS 26.0.1. That is the last official non beta version. So I took kind of a month long break or so give or take and you can see today we if you are testing the betas because this is not out officially it's the release candidate version also known as the golden master version is the version that comes out um just to be a candidate for official release unless if there's issues that apple finds and it's mac os 26.1 rc now this update adds a new tinted option for liquid glass along with other features, bug fixes and security updates for your Mac. So Apple tells us a little bit about this update, but like always, they don't always disclose everything that's new with their software updates. And that's what we're going to be covering right here, just to keep you updated and to know what you can expect if you're coming from a same version like 26.0.1 to the RC, the update size comes in at 4.67 gigs. And I was updating from this version alongside this Apple also released release candidate versions of other updates. So we got iPad OS and iOS, 18.7.2 the release candidate versions we have watch os 26.1 rc vision os 26.1 tv os 26.1 mac os 26.1 of course this is the video for that and we have ios 26.1 now most of these updates i do cover here on the channel uh i you know my mind my mind is so used to saying that i was used to covering most of these updates but i'll try my best to cover whatever i can with the limited time i now have so definitely to subscribe so that you don't miss out now what i'm going to do is update my device and then we're going to look at the new features and changes that this new software update has to offer just like that my mac is now up to date and going into the settings you can see mac os is taking 24.7 gigs and if we click on the info tab right there you can see the build number that we have right here it's 25 bravo 77 and apple intelligence is taking 13.21 gigs now that's all the software changes that are here in terms of what's new when it comes to this update the first thing that i want to tell you is that which apple briefly talked about and if we go into the settings and go to the appearance tab you can see now there's a setting for liquid glass that allows you to choose your preferred look for the liquid glass so for me the default one which is going to be set i haven't changed this yet it's the clear option and we also have the tinted option now if i select tinted you can sort of see how that affects the ui a little bit if i was to for example open like the music app and when you look at the icons where you are able to play and pause music or for example if you look at the way you know the liquid glass theme is affecting this dock right here just look at the different options as i go through the settings so for example right now it's set to the clear option and then if i select the tint option you can see this tag here becomes more uh, frosted uh, like glass it's not as clear and then if I go back to clear you can see it does take a little few seconds and then it goes back to the clear and now if I was to move up and down you can see you are able to see a little bit of what's in the background like right there and then if I go back to tinted then it pretty much washes the majority of the icons in the background. So it's good to see that Apple has given users the ability to be able to do this, to switch between tinted and clear. But one of the things that Apple should improve on, hopefully, is to give users like a slider that goes all the way from clear to tinted and then increase the um, liquid glass of clear and increase the uh, frostedness of the tinted option that way it will give users more options to choose the fine point which they want to be 
whether it's clear or tinted or in an, an in-between option as well. Another thing that's new with this update is that it changes the external hard drive icon. Now you can see the old version, how it used to look. And now this is the new version that you see right here. That is the Mac OS 26 icon. I like the new icon. It looks minimal, less ports and holes and it just looks more modern and looks like what an actual SSD would actually look like. Going into the settings and selecting Apple Intelligence. Now Apple Intelligence is available in more languages and regions. So if you speak Dutch, Portuguese, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish or Chinese, you now have access to Apple Intelligence before you had to select a different um, option. And for me, I have the English US selected. And another thing that you actually see is that the beta tag for Mac OS has actually returned before during the testing phase of this update. I didn't personally test it myself, but different users mentioned that this beta tag had disappeared. But now with the RC version, it's back. Another change that's also here has to do with one of the new apps that came over from the iPhone to the Mac with Mac OS 26 and that's the phone app. So now with the keypad or the phone pad, whichever term you use to refer to this has liquid glass in it. So now you can see when you type numbers, you can sort of see what's in the background a little bit instead of just being plain white or just frosted. Now you can see when you have your system settings set to clear under the display appearance settings like we saw earlier on that will carry over right here and you can see the UI is now more uniform. Something good happened to the apps tab. It's a window change that I'm referring to. So now when you look at the apps tab, whether you are using an external monitor like I am or you are using it on your uh, built in display, if you have a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, you can see that the window has changed slightly. So now you have more tabs and columns at the same time it seems like some of the app icons have been slightly enlarged the clock icon is now up to date and current and there's a slight color change to the music icon another app icon that changed slightly is the apple tv app icon so now you can see instead of just being the plain gray or plain black color that we used to have before apple has added more vibrant colors to it and you can see the before and after right here and it does doesn't end there because now when you open your Apple TV app, Apple has now made changes with this update because Apple has officially renamed its streaming service Apple TV Plus to simply Apple TV with new vibrant colors and new identity. Now we have three things that are being referred to as Apple TV. The first one is this is an Apple TV and you use an Apple TV to watch Apple TV on your Apple TV subscription. I don't know if that makes sense, but now three things are referred to as Apple TV thanks to this new change that Apple is sort of rebranding and taking on. One of the things that seems to have been slightly improved is the indexing when it comes to the apps tab right here. So I did the update, I let it sit down for a little bit within five minutes it had finished indexing before this used to actually take a uh, quite a while sometimes it would be as long as 20 to 30 minutes so it seems like something has fixed the indexing bug in the background and i'm pretty sure when you go to your activity tab and try to ch check what the background processes are this will also reflect that and one of the things that hasn't been improved when I do a search, whether it's command one or two or three, it doesn't seem to actually show the actual app that I'm searching for. And that was a bug that pretty much carried over from Mac OS 26.0 beta one up to now. If you use widgets on your home screen or desktop, there's a new change that's here. So now when you add a widget to your home screen and you change your appearance in the control center or display settings, that change actually takes effect on the widget. So for example, right here, if I um, enable dark mode, you can see the clock changes. Now the clock has a little bit of a delay right there from the outer border to the interior, which is kind of unfortunate because it only changes when you click on the clock widget. I wish it would just continuously be uniform throughout whether you haven't clicked on it or not, but that's one of the bugs that 
the clock app has but if you have other widgets that you add to your home page you now have the ability to see them in dark and light mode and most of them when you are on the widget page it's also going to slowly to take on the system look that you have so you can see most of them are in dark but the system is slowly changing and i hope apple makes this change more effective with time another good change that's here with music and media content has to do with playback so you can actually change it right there or you can go into your playback settings in your music uh, app and under playback you can see there is transition style so when you enable this transition style you now have the ability to actually use auto mix as an option and auto mix what it does is that it enables this unique amazing transition feature if you haven't tried it you should turn it on and then get the auto mix experience and then once you do that you now have the ability to use auto mix over airplay thanks to this new mac os 26.1 update i've opened up facetime to demonstrate a new feature that's here with this update so if you're on a facetime audio call or video call and you're experiencing low bandwidth conditions this update actually improves facetime audio quality even in low bandwidth conditions so your audio quality should remain pretty good with good bandwidth or without another change that's here has to do with privacy and security sensitive content warning so now communication safety and web content filters are enabled by default to limit adult websites or content for devices that have accounts for those that are aged between 13 to 17 but this varies by region and country that's pretty much most of the changes that i hear so should you be updating your mac to this mac os 26.1 rc i would say if you've been testing it for the beta and you are on beta 4 which i believe is the last beta before this rc version and then yes this rc version is a more stable version i installed it with no problems i tested it for a couple of hours with no problems on my other m4 mac mini and my other macbook no problems and even this video that i'm recording and testing on right now is being recorded and tested on a mac that's running mac os 26.1 but on the other hand if you haven't yet actually started testing mac os 26.1 yet on your like test device or your other device and you aren't on the beta sometimes what apple does they release like release candidate versions number two when they tend to find issues with the initial rc version so there are some issues with this update like for example one has to do with the alarms that made that actually may not always display for long periods of times when your display is asleep and the other that i saw has to do with memory management this is a hit and miss depending on the device from my findings so those seem to be issues that may potentially affect users that are going to be testing this version before it comes out officially but should these issues not prove to be a big issue then this exact version that we have today will be the official release that comes out most likely next week monday with mac os 26.1 now that's it for me for now if you like this video leave a like and subscribe and now i'll go back to my other job if you know what i mean peace